All right, so welcome back to another video. So as you can see behind me, this is my new to me 1999 Jeep Wrangler. So this 25 year old TJ is gonna be my latest project. And I've had a few of these in the past before. I'm kind of fond of a red or yellow Wrangler. And the reason I bought a TJ, which is the 97 to 2006 Wrangler is it's just new enough that you can take it on the highway if you need to, but still has that classic Jeep feel that a lot of you know what I'm talking about on the road and still feels just old enough to really give you that Jeep experience. I test drove a few newer Jeeps, slightly newer, just to kind of get a feel for them. And although they do still feel Jeep-y, this is about as new as I wanted to go. So finding a TJ now in 2024, going into 2025, it's not getting any easier, especially I live in Ohio. It's a rust belt state. A lot of these Wranglers have seen better days and they are in bad condition. And they're also all have well over 100,000 miles if they've been driven normally. All right, so if we take a walk around my Wrangler here, I did buy this at a used car dealer. I would have rather bought one from a private party, but there's just, I was being kind of picky, like I said, about the color, and I was being especially picky about the most important thing to me, which is the manual transmission. To me, it just does not feel like a Jeep unless you have to shift gears yourself. So obviously I did get this one with the hard top. I wasn't being real picky whether it was a hard top or a soft top or full doors or any of that stuff. Um, some things that kind of caught my attention initially. So some things for you to look out for if you're buying a TJ Wrangler. They are known for rust. So body places are normally rust. Under the doors right here, you can see this little bit of diamond plate is probably hiding something. There's a little bit of a bubble starting right there. It's actually not too bad. The fenders notoriously rust out right here. In fact, I would say these probably aren't the original fenders, just looking at them. Since this life, or Jeep spent its whole life in Ohio, probably not the original fender. This one, little bit, just a little bit of a ding right here. Just a little bit of rust starting from that. You can save that. But normally they start rusting out real bad right here. Moisture gets trapped. And like I said, the body areas start rusting out. And then they always like to rust out here on the back. You can see we've got just a little bit started here. Probably some rust hiding under there. For some reason, they always rust right there. So same thing when you're taking an overall stroll around one of these Jeeps. Body rust, that's kind of normal if you're seeing stuff like that. It's not that big of a deal. All right, the most important thing is frame rust. So TJ's, the frames on these things will rust out so bad, especially in the northern states. And spots that you're looking for is mainly where the control arms connect front and rear. So if we look just at the frame itself, it actually is not bad. There is a little bit of a spot you can see right here. You can see that? It's really not bad, but it needs repaired. It is going to need repaired. It's not bad. So up here, we have nothing. It's perfect. Whole frame is perfect. They also can rust out where they come down off of here. Again, you know, looking at a lot of these, this one is really not that bad. Come around to this side. Again, we've got a little bit of, this side's a little bit worse. The rust, it's still solid, but there is a layer of frame that is coming off. This will need to be repaired. Again, where the body mounts are, if you look at the body mounts, you kind of see they meet the frame. There's a little bit of rust started there. Probably need addressed. Move on up to the front. And now this time we have a little bit where the control arm mounts right there. 
again, shouldn't be too hard to fix. It's important to understand if you don't have the ability to fix rust or deal with that and you don't know somebody that can help you out with that, there are a lot of places that specialize in that. It's not that expensive because they do make a lot of frame repair kits and stuff like that. I would just say that if the frame is completely rusted on the Jeep, you know, obviously it's not going to be the best candidate to buy. If there's a little bit of stuff that needs work, if you can get a good deal on the Jeep, it might be worth it just to spend a little money. Again, just looking at this one initially, it's a pretty good looking vehicle, but there are a few hidden problems that I want to point out. I know I'm talking a lot about rust. Another spot that can rust is the floor in these. So start looking, everything's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. And then we're like, oh no, we have a problem. So you can see the floor pan here on the driver's side, it's kind of rusted through that layer right there. So hmm. we're not at Barney rubble stage yet right here, but we're getting close. That will need to be fixed. Um, they can rust out in the back. This Jeep has no rust issues at all back here. You want to look at the rear floor pan area as well. What kind of caught me off guard was I knew that the floor looked like that on the driver's side and I kind of peeked under the passenger side here kind of saw the same thing I figured okay need some floor pans but I didn't realize quite how bad this side was if we pull it up you can see the floor's pretty much gone right there so again a set of floor pans for this thing is under a hundred dollars not the end of the world but you have to be willing to either do the work yourself or know somebody that can do the work for you without spending a fortune. You can find these all day long, rust-free, especially if you go to the south to buy them. And that brings us to the next thing, price. So pricing on TJ Wranglers is insane. They are definitely at the point in their life where they are becoming a classic car and they are appreciating in value. So a few years back, off of a dealer lot, I bought a 2006 Wrangler. It was, now granted it was a four cylinder, but one of my favorite ones that I wish I wouldn't have got rid of, a yellow one, for seven, the sticker price, asking price was $7,900. Back then I thought that was high. That same Jeep right now in the condition it was in would be double that price at least. So the asking price on this one from the dealer was $7,000. This one has 170,000 miles on it. It does have the four liter inline six. Mechanically, seems to be in really good condition. Talk about that in just a second. But the price, 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 look online, I was, uh, joined some of the TJ LJ sale pages on Facebook and Marketplace, and I've been looking at these for a long time. It is not out of the question to see people asking $20,000 for really good condition Wranglers, especially LJs because they're a little more rare, you know, the long wheelbase Jeep. I see them all the time around here for around ten to 15000 that are in decent shape. So some people are getting kind of, for the Rubicon LJ, they're getting kind of stupid with the pricing. But again, this vehicle right here, you know, a few years ago, I would have never paid more than $4,000 for. And I did not pay the full asking price of 7000 but I'll just say it was close enough that it's too much. But when you think about it, like this is basically a street legal side-by-side -side is how I'm looking at it. It's a lot cheaper than a side-by-side. -side. So it really does boil down to how much do you want to pay? What condition do you want the vehicle to be in? Are you willing to put some money, time, and parts, and are you gonna make it a project? So if you can turn a wrench yourself, you can get fenders, you can get, you know, 
they make armor plates you know if you just want to cover the rust then anything you want to do on a jeep that's what's so fun about them they're like a big kid's toy uh they make it easy to do relatively cheap you can get cool bumpers and accessories and tires and all that stuff so speaking of so this jeep here uh came i will be putting a different set of wheels and tires on it you know it looks like the tires are like brand new 31 in inch tires but they do not match on the front it's got these i've seen these a lot these are fortune fermenta mt they're like an off-road mud tire probably like a chinese tire i've seen them on a lot of jeeps on the back let's get these mud star radial mts kind of the same thing they don't match but uh they are the date codes on these are 22s and these are 23s so they are like relatively new the problem is they put them on these factory 15 inch jeep wheels and uh full lock they will rub the back spacing is not good enough so i'm going to get a set of uh, ion alloy wheels which i'll have in a future video uh, which kind of kick the the wheels out a little bit give a little bit better stance it looks better it makes it so it won't rub i'm going to put a set of goodyear dirt track um kind of went back and forth between the goodyears and the bf goodrich tires uh i just like the fact that it says they're both really good i like the fact that it says goodyear wrangler on a jeep wrangler maybe that's silly but the performance of the tires is about the same to me so that was the deciding factor all right so the most fun about a jeep is the hood latch, obviously. All right, so again, like I said, just a big, big toy that you remember from when you were a kid. That's why we love it. What you're looking at here is the 4.0 straight six. Most people say it's the preferred engine in the Jeep lineup, the 2.5 four-cylinder is a good engine. Also, it's just kind of not very powerful. In, I think, 2004, the four-cylinder switched to the 2.4 liter. It was a Chrysler engine. I had a Jeep with that engine. I really liked it, actually. Again, underpowered, but it's just a fun little experience. You know, you don't really buy a Jeep to go fast you know you buy a jeep to climb the side of a wall and it's geared right it doesn't really matter it was still fun just running through the gears in an underpowered vehicle like that so again i looked under here everything looks good uh, maintenance history is pretty good um, air conditioner actually works it does have work in ac there's a few little things that look like they maybe use this vehicle as a as a tow rig behind like a motorhome it's got this battery disconnect and there's like you know this kind of contraption of a tow set up here and then obviously the dead giveaway was behind here there's a plug-in for the lighting so i'll be getting rid of all of that i'll be changing the bumper probably putting a winch on it just making this vehicle a little capable for the environment that it's going to ride in but again under the hood you want to check your fluids make sure the oil looks good if you have an automatic make sure the automatic transmission fluids good make sure your power steering fluid you got coolant make sure your coolant's not some kind of weird color like it's mixed with oil or something like that the good thing is you know if you start it and it runs and you don't hear any knocking or ticking these 4.0s really good engines again this got 170,000 miles it's kind of just getting broken really I also noticed that uh, there's some receipts in the glove box. This has a new master cylinder on it as of last year. And everything does look new here, which is nice. It also has somebody spent $1,000 to have new rear brake drums and shoes put on this thing. So I'm glad that wasn't me. It shouldn't cost nearly that much to do, but that's what mechanics will charge you these days. So $1,000 new rear brakes, new master cylinder. Like I said, the AC works. They had to do a few things before I would even drive it off the lot, like it was missing a wheel stud and uh, just a few little stupid things, safety things. But besides that, I think I got myself a solid foundation. 
I'm gonna take you guys along on the project. You know, obviously, the floor pans are kind of gonna be an important first thing that I do. The frame's not a huge deal, but I will uh, get to patching that up, get that squared away. I'm still trying to decide exactly what I'm gonna do if I wanna go crazy on it and then never think about it again, or just do something a little more temporary. We'll see. But the main thing is the floor pans, and then I'm going to be, you know, kind of outfitting it with the wheels and tires, some look stuffed bumpers. I'm kind of having like this nostalgia thing right now where I don't really know what to do with the headlights. Everybody kind of like runs and throws these. You can easily get these, you know, junky LED headlights and throw them in there. And they look kind of cool, but I don't know. I really like the old school look, but I do want it to be bright. So I'm still trying to decide. I'm kind of a headlight weirdo. Exactly what I'm gonna do there. I kind of have an idea. All right, so let's sum this up. It's 2024, we're going into 2025. Everything's crazy as far as pricing. That rings true for the Jeep Wrangler market as well. If you really, really want one, you're gonna have to shell out the money or you're gonna have to find a piece of crap and just be willing to make a project out of it. I kind of went somewhere in between. This thing has some crap-like qualities but I also paid enough money that it's not a complete piece of junk, if that makes sense. Be sure to subscribe, to follow along. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Let me know what you think about the TJ Jeep. If I ever find a duck on my windshield, it will get thrown in the trash. All right, thanks for watching. Till next time, we'll see you later.